Welcome to this Learn Electrics video, number 13 in our 18th edition exam help series. In this video, we will look at the appendices in the wiring regulations book. These appendices contain supplementary information that support the rest of the regulations. They are full of useful reference material and the purpose of this help video is not to teach you every page of the appendices, but rather to get you to become aware of what is contained in them and how to interpret the questions. If you can find the right appendix from the information in the exam question, you are well on your way to finding the correct answer. And expect about five questions on this part of the book. I recommend that you always use page three as your starting point for any question. Towards the bottom of page three, you will find the appendix numbers, their titles, and their page numbers. The appendices also have their own contents page, but they are exactly the same as page three. And as it is harder to find than page three, I never use page 339. It is much quicker to go straight to page three. The reference material and information is split into two different types of information. Appendix one is called normative. It relates to the BS and BSEN standards. The rest of the appendices are called informative. They contain useful information. And this sometimes comes up as an exam question. Which appendix is normative? Appendix one contains a list and a very brief description of all the standards referred to in the regs book. All the entries are in a strict order. The BS numbers appear first in numerical order, BS 67, BS 88, BS 951, etc. Then BS EN numbers, again in numerical order, BS EN 81, BS EN 60309, and so on. And finally, the BS IEC numbers, HD numbers, IEC numbers, etc. Make yourself familiar with the layout of this appendix. Look up some common BS or BS EN numbers that you already know. It will all help in the exam. Appendix 2 is a list of the relevant statutory regulations. Statutory must do regulations like the Health and Safety at Work Act, the building regulations, etc. There are only three pages and you are very likely to get an exam question on Appendix 2. So now is the time to at least look over the pages. The old and new voltage ranges are also in this appendix. And a common exam question is, what is the date that the voltage range is changed? Here's a typical question. The plug and socket regulations relate to plugs, sockets, fuses, etc. that are designed for use at a voltage of not less than. Somewhere on those three pages, you'll find a reference to the plug and socket regulations. Find that and you'll find the answer. It really is that easy. Appendix three is all about breakers and fuses. The title includes the words time and current characteristics. So, if a question comes up about a fuse or breaker and mentions a time and a current, then this is the place to go. Time and current characteristics. Remember this. Let's see what a typical exam question looks like. It might say, a 40 amp BSEN 60898 Type B circuit breaker is required to operate in 0 0.4 seconds. What is the minimum current required to cause this response? The question gives you two important words, a time, 0 0.4 seconds, and current. It must be the appendix for time and current characteristics. That's what we need to look in. If a question asks for time and current, go to appendix three. And the answer to the question? Well, find page 370 for BSEN 60898 type B breakers. And there in the chart on the right is the answer. Appendix 4 is all about the current carrying capacity of cables and voltage drop. This is an important appendix for you to understand. And if you know the current that must flow and you know the conditions that the cable will be exposed to, then you can calculate the correct size cable for safety and function. Try this question. What is the rating factor for a 70 degree thermoplastic cable in an ambient air temperature of 40 degrees. Right, 
before we go any further, we know that there is a table for this, but it has been missed off from table of tables in some of the wiring regs books. You need to be able to find this table in the exam, so let's put that right without further ado. Turn to table of tables on page 523. Almost halfway down, you'll find a reference to tables 4a3 and 4b2. Table 4b1 should be shown between these. If table 4b1 is missing from your book, then please insert the information as shown. Now we can answer the question. What is the rating factor for a 70 degree thermoplastic cable in an ambient air temperature of 40 degrees? You know which table to use now? It is table 4b1 on page 394. First, find 40 degrees centigrade on the left, then find 70 degree thermoplastic along the top. Where they cross is the answer. The cable should be downrated by a factor of 0 0.87. This means that at 40 degrees, 10 amp cable should only be expected to carry 8.7 amps before it overheats. Appendix 5 starts with a list of all the external influences that might have an effect on an installation. Become familiar with the layout of page 446 and what is on it. If you need more information, then the following pages contain more detail for each influence type. Appendix 6 is all about model forms, the certificates, the reports and test schedules that we complete after each job. The appendix will tell you which certificate to use for each type of work activity and do expect a question on these. As a business, you can produce your own certificates with your own logos, etc., but they must contain at least the information in the model forms. This appendix, number seven, contains several tables that list different cable colour schemes in use today and also the old colour schemes. The cable colours we use now are called the harmonised colours, a harmonised standard across Europe. Cable colours are very likely to come up as an exam question. Appendix 8 looks at bus bar trunking systems and power track systems. Occasionally a question will come up so make sure you know where the BSEN numbers are on this page and also check out the short paragraph on voltage drop for bus bar systems. Appendix 9 is another section where questions are rare. Lots of pages have a glance over them. They are all related to DC systems TTDC, TNCS DC and so on. Appendix 10, Conductors in Parallel, is another section that many exam bodies rarely ask questions on. If a question appears in the exam, you are literally looking for exact matches of wording or drawings. There are also many formulas shown. Relax, you will not be expected to perform any calculations from this section. Measuring the insulation resistance of floors and walls is a subject of Appendix 13. In some regs books, the full title has been chopped off. All it says is 13 methods for measuring the insulation. If I was you, I would add resistance impedance of floors and walls to your book on page 3. It is a specialist subject and there is only one page of words and one page of drawings. If you can find the right appendix, you can find the right answer. Out of interest, some people ask, what is the force of 750 newtons as shown at the bottom of page 502? In a very unscientific way, one newton is about the same force as an eating apple in your hand at sea level. So 750 newtons is the same as 750 apples. And this is about 85 kilograms of force, so if you like, it is the same as an average male standing on your hand. Appendix 14 is about prospective fault current. What is it? How do we measure three-phase prospective fault current if our test meters can only test a single phase? Well, the answers are here in Appendix 14, a popular appendix for exam questions. Do not try to remember all the information, just remember how to find it. Try to find this information then. An approximation of the prospective fault current due to a simultaneous short circuit between all line conductors 
is determined by a measurement between the line and neutral multiplied by. All you are doing is matching word for word and reading the wording very carefully. If you've read them correctly, you should have an answer of two. Appendix 15 is important. It is all about ring and radial circuit arrangements, how to arrange accessories on the two types of circuits, what cable sizes should be considered, what breaker sizes to use. The basic rules, floor area, cookers on ring circuits, etc. are here. And do expect a question on Appendix 15. Try this question on Appendix 15. 4mm BS6004 Twin Earth Cable can use a reduced circuit protective conductor size of... And the answer is on one of the pages somewhere. You just need to find it. Surge protective devices are the subject of Appendix 16 on page 507. It is called Devices for Protection Against Overvoltage. There are many drawings on installation methods to look at and questions will often be on SPD types as shown on the last page of this appendix, page 512. Be certain that you can find this page. A typical exam question might ask, what type of SPD is only used where there is a risk of a direct lightning strike? There is only a handful of lines to read, an easy question if you are on the right page. And lastly, energy efficiency, appendix 17. An important section in today's green world, so do expect a question. And try this question on Appendix 17. When considering energy efficiency and information for the user, the installation should be designed to enable the measurement of its total consumption in... And there are your four choices. The answer is there. Your job is to find it and compare it to the four choices offered. Only one is correct. Now we can look at some questions. But first, as always, the answers to session 12's questions on special locations. Pause the video whilst you check your answers for questions 1 to 5. And the answers for questions 6 to 10 are here. How did you do? And now to this video's questions on the appendices. There are 8 questions for you to have a look at. Question 1 talks about harmonised cable core colours. Find the correct appendix from page 3 and you'll find the correct answer. Question 2. The appendix name is in the question. This question, number 3, actually tells you which appendix to look in. And question 4 also tells you the appendix to go to in the question. Question 5 now. Read the question. All the clues are there. Question 6 is just a case of finding the correct appendix and then reading through the appendix to find the exact wording for the answer. What is question 7 asking us? A time and a current. Where are we going to look? Which appendix is about time and current? Lastly, question 8. The appendix name, or at least half of it, appears in the question. It couldn't be easier. Find the right page, find the answer. Well, that's it for this video. Answers to the questions next week, when we will also look at many of the calculations that you need to understand for the 18th edition exam. Don't worry, they are easy to do, nice, simple formulas, explained very carefully. We hope that you found this video from Learn the Electrics to be both useful and enjoyable and that you are continuing to add to your electrical knowledge. Please click on subscribe below. It will give you access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you will also ensure that you don't miss our next video. By clicking on subscribe you also help us too and we do appreciate that small act. Also, tapping in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will give you access to all the videos at any time. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.